So the door is closed. Welcome everybody. We will present for you, wait, there is more, advanced debugging tactics. We will talk about debugging PHP code and JavaScript code. And I'd like to know before we start, who has been to the session about PHP debugging yesterday? Ah, that's a nice amount. Okay, I will promise that we will only have a maximum of 25% overlap, but it will be more funny. <laughs> okay. Another note, we assume that you know what a breakpoint is. If you don't, well, I think you can follow as well. So, let me first introduce ourselves. Next to me is Mark van Gent in green, and I am Daniel Smit. We are both based in the Netherlands, we are Dutch, and we work for Dutch agencies. Um, I'm also a core maintainer of inline form, errors, and Mark, do you want to add something about yourself? No, you can look me up. He's a great, <laughs> he's a great, great mentor. He was my, my mentor and he will be here as well tomorrow. So, why should we use a debugger? Well, first of all, it's really, really nice to not have to write debug code anymore, because if you don't write any debug code, you also don't have to clean it up. You also don't risk of having debug code in your production program. The second best reason, I think, is the ability it gives you to learn. It allows you to easily follow, for example, the flow of the code, and it gives you a lot of contextual data, like all the variables you have during a certain point in the runtime of your program. And also, it really simplifies development. Oh yeah, also, it helps you find bugs. So, in this presentation, we will work with uh, the following tool set, PHP Storm, Xdebug, the Chrome development tools, and the Chrome Xdebug extension. <coughs> so, please, Mark, tell us more. Thank you, I'm happy to. So, yeah, that's our PHP debugging. Um, I think it's really important to know your tool. So, who's using PHP Storm over here? Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay, so PHP Storm has a couple of great things, and some you might already know, so we're going to do this pretty fast. Um, in fact, we have to do the whole presentation pretty fast. It used to be a one hour presentation. We took out 25% and doing it in half an hour today. So here we go. Um, you got a lot of deeply nested attributes in arrays, in arrays, in arrays, in Drupal core. Um, and then Drupal module. So if you want to take that out and, and need to access the variable, there is a really great um, thing called copy path. When you have a breakpoint somewhere, you can copy the path and you get this whole form attributes class identifier. Um, so you can use it at once in your code. It's great. And then the call stack. Um, you know when you put a breakpoint somewhere, um, okay, you're right there, but there is a call stack, and it means that you can go up the tree and see who called this code and where is the code that called that code. So you can like go all the way back up to index.php where it all started. So that's a good way to figure out what happened and why it happened. An unconditional breakpoint. This is actually something that I learned when I was on a, a code sprint at a DrupalCon. Um, I saw a core maintainer using conditional breakpoints everywhere. So. There are some points in your code where you pass multiple times. Um, so for instance, in, in config management, it's, that's code that's, that's called many times. Um, but you're only interested in like one specific occasion where it goes wrong. So that's where conditional breakpoints come in. You say, okay, this is not always a breakpoint. This is only a breakpoint when this key has a certain value. It's great to pinpoint where exactly things go wrong. Um, one caveat always use the double uh, equal sign, so use a comparison operator. If you use only one, it's an assignment operator, and you're actually um, 
changing live uh, uh, variables in your running PHP script and it messes with your mind pretty badly. Okay, one more tip. In PHP Storm, you can record shortcuts and macros. On my machine, I got a command shift dot or control shift dot if you're using Linux, um, which types foo equals bar and sets a breakpoint at the same time, um, which is really nice, although this introduces debugging code, which Daniel just told I shouldn't do, but okay, still works. Like that? Wait, there's more. So you see this hooligan, and do you recognize this code? Have you ever written something like this, console log, console debug? You shouldn't anymore. Why shouldn't we do that anymore? Well, because it's 2017 and Barney says so. Stop it. Also, don't use the alert, fu alert function. Basically, for JavaScript, if it runs in the browser, you can also debug it in the browser. So, we want to start to debug in the browser. Uh, we will first have to open the development uh, toolkit and then open one of our source files. So, the easiest way I always do it is uh, the command P. You can do it from every tab if your uh, developer toolkit has the focus. And you can just start typing anything you like. It has a very smart fuzzy search, so you can just type a part of the word and, uh, for example, uh, end in GS and it will quickly find your file. So, it will show up in the sources tab, control P or control O sometimes, or command. Using breakpoints, it's quite similar to how we are used to it in PHP Storm. Uh, you can also put it uh, on a point in your code on a line number. And you can also use it to, well, step by step, walk through your JavaScript code, as you can see here. But what I like more is that it can also detect changes. Sometimes things happen. You install a library, you use all kinds of fancy stuff that's shipped with Drupal core, and something changes. You don't know exactly where that happened, why it happens. And what you can do is you can place uh, breakpoints that watch for changes. For example, here, I say, hey, buddy, tell me if something changes in your attributes. For example, if a, if a class is added, well, I click in the, in the menu of Drupal, Drupal 8, something happens, I hit jQuery, but then I use the call stack on the right side, and I see, ah, there's some JavaScript I do recognize and maybe understand, maybe can change. And I see in my code, oh yeah, there was a toggle class. Well, this is a really nice way to find where something happened. And you can also do it for example, if you really, really don't know what is changing, for example, you don't know that it's a class or on which element it is, you can also say, hey, watch for the subtree. Is there something maybe down the road that is changing? It will be a bit more difficult to exactly find where what happened because your call stack will probably be a bit longer, but using the uh, call stack on the right side, you can easily find, hey, there's a, probably a non-minified piece of code which you can look into. Um, what we just saw is that was, uh, uh, jQuery was opening. Well, often it's, uh, it's for us a black box. We just assume it works. If something is broken, well, maybe I did something wrong. So what you can do is say, hey, jQuery, I don't want you to open if I'm breaking on some code. You can right click and say, hey, add it to our black box. Uh, you cannot do that per file, but you can also go through your, via the settings and use a smart uh, uh, regular expression to say all these kind of files I don't want to show up in my develop, developer toolkit. Um, another one, one nice point that Mark also mentioned for uh, PHP, we can also do conditional breakpoints in JavaScript. Um, on your line number, if there's a breakpoint, you can uh, right-click it. Let's wait. 
right click, and we're going to edit it, and I add a little bit of code that says, hey, when processing the entities on this display, I only want to see when a, uh, a node is processed, and then when I do something, it says, hey, the, ye the ye yellow uh, breakpoint lights up, hey, this is happening. Really nice. Um, yeah, we talked about the, the context. It allows you to re really easily um, um, understand your uh, your code and what's uh, what's available on a certain point in time. And here's on the right side, beneath your call stack, you can see all the variables that are available. So what you can also do is open up the console. PHP Storm also has a console. Uh, we didn't see it, I think, this time. No. Nope. But what's really nice, for example, for Drupal, we work with behaviors, and sometimes you just want to repeat one of the behaviors and see if it works. Do I need to add a once, or did I put my context right? Um, you can, for example, just uh, trigger your code in the in the console and watch what happens, and then step by step go through your code and see, hey, is my behavior working right? So. For people that do want to know what happens in jQuery and you have your minified version, there's also a nice option to prettify your code. So it's the other way around. We can click it. Ah, really nice. Now we can understand something. Well, the variable names wouldn't make that much sense, but it helps a bit to read through the code. If that's not badass enough, um, just like in SCSS, there's support for source maps. So you can use your minified JavaScript and debug via, via source maps. So here's an example site. Um, there is a, a minified script, and I cannot really debug that, but Google already says, hey, I detected a source map. Okay, then I go and find the non-minified uh, version. Where is it? It still says minimal. Well, Google, no Google knows more than I do. He says this is the non-minified version. And we can open it, and you can put a breakpoint in there, and it will show you everything with, with really nice variable names, function names, and so forth. I didn't know that. OK, I did. But tell me more anyway, Mark. Thanks. How are we doing for time? Cool. So, mobile debugging is a different topic that's going to give you some, some break once in a while. Um, so, we've seen the Chrome Inspector, but did you actually know that the Chrome Inspector is also running on your Android phone? Um, so, I'm not talking about device emulation. It's not like make believe, do as if uh, we were a mobile device. No, it's really on your mobile device. So what do you need? Um, if you've got Chrome on a laptop and Chrome on a tablet or phone, or it may be a WebView app, which is actually an app that's basically running a, a small website wrapper, um, you need enable USB debugging on that phone. Um, that's basically all you need to get it working. Um, I'm not going to explain it in much detail because it would take like half an hour by itself, but um, there's good documentation on the developers.google.com website. So once you've got that, um, you can go in your browser to Chrome uh, colon slash slash inspect, and you will see your connected device, and you can make a connection to it. You choose the device and the app that's running on it, which is probably like Chrome or Chromium, and on the device, it will ask you to accept the connection, and then you have a connection. Oh, by the way, this assumes that your phone is connected with a USB cable to your laptop. And that's basically all you need. And then you really have what you see over here. On the left, you see um, the inspector, just like you know, and that's on your laptop. So you just see the inspector, and you can uh, point and, and, and uh, click elements in your site. And you will see them simultaneously on your phone screen. You will see them highlighted as if that is your actual browser, and because it is your actual browser. So that's a great way sometimes if you really can't figure out where sometime, some things are working on, uh, on the desktop but not on your mobile device, use this. Um, it can even um, handle port forwarding, so um, you can uh, visit sites 
from your mobile device that are actually running on localhost. And just like I quickly showed you here with how to do it with Chrome and Android devices, it's also possible with Apple devices. And well, Apple is Apple, it works best if you've got an Apple laptop and Safari and the whole Apple suite. But um, point being, you can do this and um, it's not as difficult to set up uh, as you might think. At least for me it was a revelation doing this for the first time. I was like, okay, wow, I can do this and it works, cool. Interesting? I like this one. Got some more? So, if you're doing Drupal and you want to contribute, which everybody wants, for everything you want to introduce, introduce or you want to fix something, you have to write tests. Well, we have multiple types of tests and we can de debug them all via PHP as well, PHP Storm as well. Um, the main difference is that, for example, if you want to uh, debug your normal website, which is not, uh, which is not a test, um, instead of, for example, setting your cookie via, via your uh, extension you probably use, uh, mostly you have to set this extension in, a, in another way, because instead of running it through the browser, um, you will be running PHP uh, via the command line. Um, and there are a couple of ways to do that. Um, PHP Storm can set some of them for you, and in some cases you will need to ex export some variables uh, to your environment of your uh, console. Uh, these are some examples for Bash and Fish. Uh, another important one, it was also mentioned yesterday, I think, um, it is to uh, set up PHP Storm in a way that it allows multiple con connections, say three or more. So, we have a small demo for you. We have a, a load test, and you can right click this test and if, when you put a breakpoint and say, hey, debug this code, and we really, really quick and show you what's happening. So, I think we have a new record, Mark. <laughs> I think we do. Um, so uh, yeah, time to say thank you. And we want to say thank you to our employers, Limon Kuhn and Synetic, and say special thanks to Triquanta who allowed us uh, also to um, uh, prepare this uh, presentation. Um, and we would love to hear your questions. If there is anything that's not completely clear, anything that you should demo or anything, well, I don't think got live demos right here. Um, but anything that, that's not clear or you want uh, us to expand more on, so um, uh, please make yourself heard. Hey, thanks for the presentation. There's something I uh, often fail at uh, making work, which is the use of workspaces to map local file system to uh, the, uh, the, the sources you see in the inspector. Is there some explanation about that? You know, when you go to the sources screen, uh, Chrome tells you that you can map the, the local files to a workspace, but I can never make this work. Yeah, um, so you mean in PHP when, when um, PHP Storm, right? When there's, uh, in, oh, in Chrome, sorry. Um, can you? I haven't used that a lot. Sorry. But tomorrow we'll be here, we can investigate together. <laughs> So please come to the front if you have a different question, we can answer. <laughs> Only questions are allowed that we can answer, otherwise we look stupid. <laughs> well, I just want to say, um, both of us will be here tomorrow, um, and we've done this as well, as well at the uh, Drupal Development Days. Um, if you have problems setting up your uh, xdebug, for example, or want to know how you get everything running, please visit us. We'll be here, I think, all day. I will be. Yeah. Okay. You can find us here. Oh, wait, there's more. There's more. Do we got time? Yes. Oh, we got time. Cool. Did you know that actually SAS, like the, the, the CSS preprocessor, has a debug function? It does. Yeah. You can, like, 
enter at debug and then include a variable or some calculation or something that you do and it will just turn up in your command line when you're running the says watch command or your gulp watcher or something like that. Seriously, it's cool. So, but don't forget to remove your code, Mark. Sorry, Daniel. Um, so, what did you think? Leave us a message and um, have a great DrupalCon. Thank you all. Yeah. Hi.